Hi everyone, welcome to Writing 227. I'm Frank Romanelli, your professor for the semester. Business communications is quite a popular class, so I'm glad that you got in and you're working with me. Um, this is an anytime class, or as some people call it, an asynchronous class. Um, I would like to suggest that if we have the opportunity to have a guest speaker or an occasional meeting, um, that I will put out some times and anyone that can make it, it will be voluntary and the, there'd be no penalty for not being there. And I would record it for those that couldn't make it. But I would like to have some live meetings, get to see and speak to each other. And I do have a, a guest speaker or two in mind um, who have come into my classes before and done a great job. So, but let's get started. I'd like to give you a little introduction to the resources that we use in this class and how it works. I do things a little differently. Um, so I wanna go over them today and make sure that they're all very clear. And I'm gonna start with your Brightspace. All right, so here's our Brightspace homepage. Right now I am in it looking at it as a student. Um, and you're pretty, you know, you, you know the game by now. If you've been at URI, you know that you click on the Start Here button. I like, personally, I like to start with content and look at the Overview button because there's information there. That's, for example, that's where my greeting letter is. Um, and then go to the table of contents and start here. So um, all of this information is here and I am inviting you to go through it. Your assignment starting this week, one of them is to go through all of this page, all of the page I'm about to show you and learn the resources. A few things I'm gonna ask you to do, a little bit that I'm gonna ask you to read just to get our feet planted in the ground and then week two, we'll actually start moving forward from there with some other things. One thing I would like to ask you all to do, please. I use a resource called Remind. It's an SMS resource that allows us to text each other without knowing each other's phone numbers. Go to these instructions and follow the instructions to join my class. And again, your phone number is not shared. So uh, be, be aware of that. In most of your classes, Week one, week two, week three, et cetera, are set up here on Brightspace. I like to use Google Sites. I think Google Sites have a little more um, diversity of use, a few more things I can do. I think they're easier to kind of navigate around. So I've already created the site and I'll show it to you in a minute. And that's where we'll go uh, for most of our information. But if you wanna be comfortable using Brightspace for your schedule, I will link to each week from that page. And this that's what I've done here, all right? So week one, you can click on any of these links. I'll show you that in a minute. What doesn't change is your assignments, which it looks like only one has posted so far and one has not opened yet. Class list, which as you know, gives you the opportunity to communicate with anyone in the class. And for those of you who have never used groups yet, because we will use groups in this class, it also gives you the opportunity to see what group you're in, who you're working with. Um, for our first project is going to be a group project, and you'll know who your group partners are. By changing this to groups, clicking apply, and then going here to figure out which group you're in. All right. Um, and it'll show you the members of that group. And clicking apply. Then this list will reduce to only the people in that group. So if you're not familiar with that, that's how you do groups on Brightspace. Um, I hope that helps you if you haven't done it already. Um, there's also a self-enrollment process. Sometimes there's one activity in which you will self-enroll into the activity. And there are instructions in the assignment telling you how to do that. The next thing, discussions. Discussions will be almost weekly and none of them have opened yet. That's why you don't see anything but the Q&A. The Q&A is not for credit and it's anonymous. This is the place you go when you have questions about assignments, readings, due dates, resources, etc., anything else. If it's not personal about your particular assignment or about you, if you put your questions here so that others can see them. Most questions that are asked, there are at least four other people that are too shy to ask the same question but they want to know. I can't encourage you enough. Please ask your questions. Don't go away frustrated or saying, I don't know how to do that. Okay, 
The next thing I'd like to do is go to our Google site and show you it and how it works. You can do that by again going to start here and scrolling down to class Google site and that will take you there. Um, I've already got it up so I'm just going to click over to here and this is it. So here's our class Google site. Uh, again this is kind of home base. I keep the information up to date. Please check here. Check everything. I change this uh, top message often to suit whatever we're doing. There again is the remind is to take a look at schedule and assignments. That's where I will post all of the work that you should be doing for a particular week. And I've already, again, I've already opened that. So you click on that tab and you'll see, for example, here's week one. And I'm asking you to complete these tasks to read these resources, including the entire class Google site and the Bright Place site. And I would like you to watch these two videos. So that's our first week. The activity for you to introduce yourselves is just bringing it back to Brightspace assignments. And you don't see it yet, but it will open tomorrow. Okay. So that's how I interact between those two resources. Again, if you ever get confused, just ask. I have all the information here on the Google site that you need to know, including your books. There are two books for this class. One is the column book, which is a soft cover book that you can get in the bookstore. Um, it's pretty inexpensive if you want to go online and get it. There's the ISBN link to do a search for it. Uh, make sure you get this one, the concise edition with this cover. Okay. The second book is actually an online book. Um, it's free. It's open source. And you can download it if you want, or you can just read it here. All right. And it's on the site. In fact, if you look right here, there's a link to it. There's a link to it here. I link in lots of different places because different people think different ways. I try to make it as easy as possible for you. If you ever find that a link is wrong or dead, please let me know immediately so I can correct it. And then our last resource, rather than getting you um, a writing handbook, I prefer, because I think it's the best resource out there, is that we use the Purdue Online Writing Lab. All right, the OWL. The OWL is amazing. They keep it up to date. They have resources for every kind of writing. They have activities if you feel weak in a certain um, skill of your writing. And they have lots of examples. When you don't know how to do something, when you would say, well, you know, what is this supposed to look like? How many pages is this supposed to be? It's, you know, go online and look at the examples. One of the wonderful things about this generation of learning that was not there when I first started school is that you can always do a Google search or you can always do um, a YouTube search. And I love YouTube videos because lots of instructional videos on there. For example, I found the YouTube video today to show you how to join a group, um, how to self enroll in a group on Brightspace. And I posted it with that assignment that opens tomorrow. Use your resources. You know, you don't have to ask me if you can find the answer yourself. I think that's important. You can check with me and say, is this what you mean? I don't have any problem with that, all right? But I invite you to, you know, be as much of a self-learner as you can be because that's when real learning happens. So those are all of those resources. Where and how are you going to do assignments for this class? On your URI Google Drive, and that's the address that I'm putting in there, your URI address. Over here in the left column, if you've never done it, is Shared Drives. Go to the Shared Drive that is writing227 S21. And in that shared drive, it looks like John has created a folder, Ian has created a folder, I had created a sample folder to show you what how it should be set up. This is where you will publish all your assignments. It works best if you start the file here. So if you're doing a text assignment, um, any kind of a report, please start here. This is very important for a number of reasons. By creating as a Google Doc. Well, Google has a great uh, resource that allows me as a writing professor to go and look at um, version histories. And I can see the history of that document each time it was opened and saved and the names of people that were collaborating on that document 
So I can see that you did your, um, your peer editing, your peer review. I can see that everyone in the group contributed. Um, and I can see the whole process. And that's really, really important in writing. So um, if you import a Microsoft Word document, or if you send me a PDF, I can't do that. And I will deduct the grade. Okay, so over here, if you go to the bottom of week one, you'll see, um, here you go, the videos that I'd like you to watch, that I've asked you to watch. And here, the last tab says create, and that'll take you right to the class share drive. If you can't get into the share drive, it's because you're not in your URI account. If it still doesn't work once you're in your URI account, please contact me but I will be putting all of your emails into that uh, drive. I, I think I've already done that, but I'll check to make sure a couple of people added late. All right, so what have I shown you today? I've shown you how we use Brightspace in this class and how it's slightly different than some of the other classes that you use Brightspace for and what we're using Brightspace for. So we're definitely using Brightspace to see the information about an assignment, um, the discussion boards, class list for communication and groups, um, gradebook, and there are other class tools if you wanted to get, for example, if you wanted to get to the groups. And then I showed you that we are using a class Google site. And you can get to it best by clicking on that link, all right, or by bookmarking the link so that you don't even have to go into Brightspace. Or you could use this shortcut which is tinyurl.com backslash WRT227S21, writing 227, spring 21. So um, the next thing I talked to you about uh, was Remind, and I asked you to please join Remind. And you can find this information and directions both on Brightspace and on this page. I asked you to look through the class schedule, and this is where your assignments will be posted every week. Uh, Again, the full assignment is on Brightspace, but the information of the schedule is here, all right? And in here, I've asked you to follow the instructions for each tab, what to complete, what to read, what to write, and what to create. And I'm asking you in this case to create uh, a working folder in our class shared drive. Now you can easily get to the class shared drive by clicking on this link or you can go to this small sample of the shared drive and click in this top right corner and it'll take you right to the drive. Um, the first outside resource you'll be using, I haven't mentioned yet because I use it for introductions and sometimes for reflection and, and discussions um, just to kind of mix it up a little bit so that discussions are not always written. And it's, if you haven't used it yet, um, it's a fun activity, great, great way to do introductions and it's called Flipgrid. So when the assignment opens tomorrow, you'll see a link to your Flipgrid and you can go there and start the activities based on the information in the directions. So I think I've covered everything. Um, what's most important and one of the hardest things to do in an anytime online class, if you have never taken one, is um, to keep up with the schedule, to discipline yourself to make sure that you're checking due dates that you're following instructions, that you're reading instructions before you ask questions. That's also very important. Um, that you feel free to ask questions. I will tell you, if you don't get a response from me within a day after you have asked a question, I missed it. Send it again. All right, that does happen occasionally because I get so much email every day. And then for the quick I need to know nows, remind. Um, I do do online office hours. Um, if you need me to, we can get on our class soon. I'm okay. guessing you know how to do that. But at the end of our Brightspace, if you go to more, and there's, Zoom, there's our Zoom link. And you've probably already done that for some of your other classes. So what have I left out? If I've left out anything that you want to know, please put it in our Q&A. And I'll go in there and put the answer. And please check due dates. And honestly, I love teaching. And the students that I have taught have, do magnificent work. Take the work seriously. I, I try only to give you work that's worthwhile, that, that has purpose for your future. Um, and those of you that are seniors will especially appreciate that because you're, you're getting ready to, 
embark on that next stage of your life. Those of you that are sophomores and juniors, or maybe you're thinking about internships. Or maybe if you're a junior, you are already thinking about that next step. No matter what, these, these assignments will be built around those experiences. That's it for me for now. Um, enjoy doing your flip grids. Enjoy doing your first week in the class. Ask questions in the forum. I think we're going to have a good time. All right. I hope this was all clear to you. Thank you.